rat lungworm is here to stay in the islands. We can't eradicate rats and we can't eradicate snails. So before we talk about prevention, uh, we need to know a little bit about the basic biology of rat lungworm. It's called rat lungworm because it's uh, the main host of the worms is the rat. This is the organism in which the worms breed. The rats release juvenile worms, larvae, in their feces and the snails come along, the snails and slugs, come along and eat the, those feces, thereby ingesting those baby worms. Those worms then develop in the, in the snail or slug to the infective stage and when a rat comes along and eats uh, that snail or slug, the worms are ingested, go down their, down their gut, ultimately through the circulatory system they reach the brain. There they develop further and then leave the brain and come, in, come down into the pulmonary artery which is the artery that connects the heart to the lungs and that's where they mate and reproduce. They lay eggs, those eggs hatch into the early stage larvae. Those larvae migrate up the rat's wind, uh, uh, windpipe and then are swallowed and go back down the gut and out the back end and the cycle starts all over again. So the primary way that people will become infected is by eating an actual snail or slug, which will have potentially thousands of these minute worms in their bodies. People have talked about the possibility of worms being present in slime, slime trails that the snails and slugs leave around, perhaps on produce. Very few worms actually occur in the slime, maybe one or two or half a dozen, but not the thousands that actually occur in the snails and slugs themselves. The number of, of worms in the slime is uh, probably not sufficient to cause serious disease. And so the focus of um, the kinds of prevention uh, that we are advocating is to wash produce thoroughly, particularly leafy greens in which a little snail or slug, baby one, that might be only a quarter of an inch long, uh, could hide away. The newly hatched babies of some of those slugs are only, um, say, about a quarter of an inch long when they hatch out of the eggs. And they're not dark brown or grey, they're pretty much translucent. And so very, very difficult to see, or at least unless, unless you're really looking for them. Um, so that's why it's so important. That, and, and one of those little babies could have picked up thousands of worm larvae. We recommend just using tap water to wash the produce because we've done experiments here in the lab uh, that show that um, using dilute solutions of vinegar, um, bleach, salt water, um, none of them works any better than just plain old tap water. It's basically the force of the, the, the flow of the water that is washing the snails off your produce. There are three things that you, that you need to do. The first is sanitation of the growing area. Don't leave planks of wood lying around that snails and slugs can crawl under and hide away in. And keep everything neat and tidy. This reduces the number of places that snails and slugs can hide away and so the population is not as uh, abundant. The second thing obviously is to try and um, kill the snails and get rid of the snails. Two ways you can do this. One is to put slug bait down, snail bait, which you buy commercially in the garden store. Um, some people might not want to do that, and you might not want to do that if you've got pets around, like dogs, um, because it's dangerous for those animals. The other thing that you can do in terms of killing them by putting something out is to put sources of beer out. Beer. Snails love beer. They fall into the saucer and drown. The third thing you can do, you need to go out at night and when they're active, collect them and kill them yourself. 